Hello. Another day, another worm. <laughs> Welcome to day one of Daily Worms with Jamie. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but here's a base I sculpted uh, for the bile worm request from I Paint Small Things submission of the last print and paint club. So did a bit of Googling. You know, these are featureless worms, but they're supposed to be able to uh, spit out toxic something or rather. And a lot of people opt to have um, like a toothed versions of these worms. But I thought it'd be fun to make like this basic base and share this file with you guys. Uh, so that you guys can have fun, uh, at least those of you that know how to or enjoy digitally sculpting, have fun making your own worms. Uh, so I'm going to share this file with you guys. Uh, the, the the footprint of the like the worm it's on is 25 millimeters, so you know you can double it for 50 or scale it down for smaller, and you can use it without a base if you want to. And the head is separate and is, you know, centered in the world and symmetry is on, like it's symmetrical. So you can, you know, sculpt with symmetry to start if you want. And of course you can modify the body how you like. Um, I'm gonna sculpt in ZBrush cause that's my program of choice, but I'm gonna share it as a blend file. So if you too use ZBrush, uh, simply, you know, import the OBJ from Blender or if you have like the GoZ, GoB plugin, you can just do it that way. Uh, so yeah, let's sculpt the worm. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a toothed version as well. Um, or maybe not, I don't know. We'll see where this takes us. It is looking a bit phallic, I know. I did play with it a little bit uh, before starting to record. You know, simply duplicating the head uh, expanding it a bit and giving it one of these um, is, is, is already <laughs> yeah we're gonna delete that <laughs> anyway uh, so yeah let's make a worm so obviously it needs some place to split or spit out some toxic fluids. So we're gonna give it a big mouth. Mm -hmm. And you know, been doing a lot of teeth and tongue stuff lately because uh, <laughs> of, uh, of the Mimic project that just wrapped up. So I'm still in the, um, still very much into or like, it's still very much, uh, what's the word? Really in that mood, still. I did talk about it in the update post that, you know, I'm considering doing a Mimics 3. But I do have another Kickstarter project in mind, um, which I will share with you after I'm done sculpting with this. I still want it to be worm-like, not snake-like, so I don't think I'll have the mouth open like that. Rather have it more like this. Yes. Hmm? That looks good. Not really looking at any reference, although I have been looking around at some worms, so probably something I've seen will come through here. Um, but not really trying to follow anything in particular. Although that's like one of the things that like every time I do something, it's always similar to something else. You know that like that's what art is really. You're just building upon the things you've already seen. Like it's impossible to come up with something with no reference to anything that you've already seen before. You know, like even the most outlandish futuristic sci-fi stuff is all based upon things that like we've seen or we know about or technology that we're already on the ver like coming towards, right? 
Because anything out of that, like anything unimaginable, is just too weird, right? Hey, while well, I have you here, it's uh, nice to um, have a chat. I just, I just felt like turning on the recording and just seeing where this goes. It's a relatively simple sculpt, I guess. Um, you know, it's just a worm. Oh yeah. By the way, I'm just gonna save this quickly as bile worm one, just so I don't ruin the save of the base that I'm gonna share. Oh yeah, so when I share this base file, uh, feel free to sculpt with it, you know. Excuse me, however you like. And I'd love to see you like share on the Discord uh, what you guys come up with. Um, yeah, it's a lot of different worms out there. I feel like I was about to say something, but I forgot. Oh yeah, nice to talk to you guys turning it on. I have had a little bit on my mind uh, lately, especially about Printed Encounter. Um, you know, I feel like I'm sort of stubbornly trying to make this work, even though, you know, I like growth isn't really there for the Patreon and the amount of time I put into it and the work I do for it is, it feels a little bit wasted considering that had I invested you know, as much time as I did on stuff here into just making Kickstarter products and Kickstarter campaigns, I would be a lot better off financially at the moment, which, um, you know, is true. But the nice thing about Patreon is the consistency, like, n like seeing that number of supporters and how much money is consistently coming in each month is quite valuable compared to like the the anxiety I feel every time I'm about to launch a Kickstarter campaign and 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 just like hoping it does well and 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 have everything sort of you know shift depending on how well a particular campaign does so and like with the frog folk project which by the way I'm still I'm not I haven't forgotten about it it's, I've still got Frog Folk coming and I still plan on doing stuff with it. But the reason it's been put on hold was that like a couple months ago, I really, I really needed uh, to, to actually, <laughs> you know, I needed money basically. So I launched the Mimic Manor 2 campaign as like, uh, as something that I thought would do extra well or like do well because um, the previous one did and this is like a sequel to that previous one, right? So I was banking on some returning backers and and stuff like that. And and thanks to the backers of that campaign, it did do well and it was enough to, you know, get me out of this bind, which by the way was like uh, needing to pay back taxes from last year because I wasn't putting money aside for that, which I've started doing for this year. So hopefully next year's tax season is gonna go a lot better. Um, but yeah, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Frog Folk project wasn't very well thought out. Um, it was a project trying to combine the Patreon offering with like um, a Kickstarter campaign. And it, it just became kind of weird because I was trying to have it very open-ended and and like a lot of backer input for what I was gonna make, but then the scope of the project got really weird. Like I didn't, I, I just like ended up by like not knowing exactly what I'm making for it. And yeah, it got really strange, but I do plan on continuing making the Frog Folk project, but a little bit more focused on maybe like the army wargamer side of things because there's like clear direction there, right? Of like needing to have infantry, with different weapons, uh, you know, shooters with different weapons, a musician type, a, a banner bearer type, a mounted, you know, like it's it's very clear and sort of offers a framework that I could work off of, you know. Uh, and now since joining the OPR compatibility program, there's like a lot of, you know, it's sparking a lot of like, 
it's making it a lot clearer about like what to make for certain things. You know, not not being a war gamer myself, it, it's hard, but having something like that to follow is 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 very helpful. So I'm looking forward to that and completing like the uh, this first one, which is the Wolf Clan Goblins, and you know, after after the Goblins, you know, trying out different factions and playing around with that and and I, I look forward to seeing where this goes um, but yeah I'm just talking I don't know where I was going with this uh, frog folk what was I saying yeah so I, I still I still want to continue with that right I'm just taking a little break and the reason I did the mimic project because I I needed the money taxes blah 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 but now the mimic project is over and Kickstarter is you know my main source of income over these last couple of years I've tried making like I've the reason I'm, I've been really pushing patreon recently is because like I mentioned I, I prefer the security that patreon offers but growth has been quite stagnant these past couple months. I don't know if it's the season. I did see a big dip last summer as well. You know, people are just not inside <laughs> printing models, I guess. Um, but uh, but it's it's been worse than that. Um, but like looking at my Patreon compared to other Patreons, it's very. Um, <laughs> chaotic I don't know like I feel like I don't really offer one clear thing it's hard to sell someone without a clear image of what I actually offer right do a bit of everything it's been quite um, I don't know I've been like throwing a lot of stuff at a wall right like and just seeing what sticks I don't feel like I've found I've 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 found all my people yet, you know what I mean. Um, but the ones that have found me, uh, you know, those of you that have supported me all these months, I I really appreciate it, and like I feel like um, you know, I feel really grateful for your support, and it's the kind it's you're the kind of people that I'd like to attract, you know, uh, so. Because I don't offer like a clear thing, like I'm not only making, for example, only models from one faction for one game type thing, which, you know, those Patreons, clearly there's a market for them because there's a lot of people that subscribe to those. And it's really clear like, oh, because I collect this faction and uh, this Patreon offers only these models, I will support them because, you know, they make stuff that's always useful for me, which is obviously, you know, that's great. Then you look at my Patreon, it's like, what does this guy even do? <laughs> you know, one week he does this, one week he does that. But that's just how I am like a creator as well. Like I, I get really bored stuck on the same thing for too long. And it's been a real hindrance to like those larger Kickstarter projects I did. For example, Penguin Army got really tough towards the end because I was just tired of sculpting penguins, right? So. <laughs> even like so I can't imagine running a patreon that only did like one type of army like month in month out like it's it'll be tough but the idea of like having lots of different projects to bounce between and like uh, working on this and that and you know doing different lines you know currently like I'm doing like uh, the the painting uh, the painting club uh, the Wheel of Monsters, which, by the way, is coming to an end, but hopefully uh, I'll share with more details uh, later after I sculpt this thing. But yeah, um, and like now with the OPR stuff, you know, so the, the reason is like I'm sticking to the, fa uh, the skirmish game because it's just like a lower model count. So this month I'm going to make like the warriors, shooters, modular warriors and modular shooters or not modular shooters, but shooters, upgraded shooters, like with the uh, crossbows. So did I say this week? I meant this month. So August will be warriors and shooters and their upgrades. And then next will be the 
uh, beast riders which will be on wolves and then if I have time next month also some leaders as well so th that's pretty like solid you know you get like a skirmish uh, uh, you can do a full skirmish army is it called army or team or I don't know I should I should actually read the book but I was going off their army lists on the army forge website and yeah that's enough to build like a solid team is it competitive like is it viable as a competitive team probably not but the idea here is that I'm just gonna stick to a theme you know have like a certain look just one sort of packaged product done and then moving on from that look at other factions make other sort of similar size skirmish team something that I could do over like a one to two month period alongside other things right because uh, I want to do other things um, what was I doing oh, yeah, I was adding a ton um, yeah uh, it's tough it's tough to talk and sculpt at the same time because like when you lose one train of thought it's like two trains going and I don't feel like I'm very good at that <laughs> like doing two things at once you know my girlfriend can tell me or can tell you that uh, yeah doing two things at once is not my strong suit uh, but I'm trying I'm trying uh, hopefully I don't lose the train of thought on the sculpt um, where's this tongue going just down I guess Hmm. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Kickstarter project. Okay, I was gonna share with you later, but screw it. Here's the idea. So Wheel of Monsters is a project that I release for free, right? If you go on my principles or Thingiverse page, all the models I make for Wheel of Monsters are available for free. Uh, this is because I share these models on Reddit and stuff like that, so that hopefully, you know, it creates a funnel to people to actually want to support me on Patreon. Um, this was good at the start, uh, feeling a lot of like my early patrons, those of you that have found me, probably found me through Wheel of Monsters, especially those of you that follow me for free here on Patreon, uh, probably found me through this. Uh, that was the idea, right? So you know, not totally uh, selfless, right? I'm making a lot of free content to put out, but you know, the, you know, the benefit to me was hopefully that people would find me. Uh, however, like recently, ever since the API drama with Reddit, like I get no traction. I have a really hard time marketing myself recently. And, you know, I don't know if this is related to the stagnant growth on Patreon, uh, but I feel like it could be. And I've, I feel like, like working on the series is really fun, but I feel like it's, a, like, I can't help but feel like it's a little bit wasted because you know I'm not sitting too great financially at the moment so putting time into a project that I'm putting giving away for free just doesn't feel good um, you know I, I still enjoy it but I, I would like it more if I felt like I was like you know if I was better compensated in some way so I decided to try like launch a Kickstarter campaign specifically for the Wheel of Monsters series like I did mention that I, uh, yeah, yeah. So with the frog folk and the Patreon, it, the first campaign I tried related to Printed Encounter was the Kobolds and Mechanical Gnomes, which went nowhere. The funding was unsuccessful. But what it did do was like give some attention to the Patreon because, you know, uh, Kickstarter is like built in marketing because having a live campaign naturally means that people browsing other campaigns can find your campaign and then can find you right so the second attempt at this was the frog folk campaign uh didn't do too like well 
like I said, mainly because it was very uh, unclear what it was. And I feel like it can be done better. And like I will, I am making it. I, I have an idea for it, uh, which is going to be more focused. Uh, but I didn't like how the offering was kind of split, right? Because what if you back the campaign and then decide to become a patron? Uh, I didn't like the idea that I was making patron content that was like available to people that didn't back the campaign. Like it was weird. Um, so yeah, the idea here for this campaign is to run a pay what you want campaign. So allow people that, you know, want to support the Wheel of Monsters series a chance to do so. Because I feel like there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people interested in giving support to me, but not interested in subscribing to a Patreon, which I totally get. Like, I, I understand the fatigue of having too many subscriptions, 100%. So, and if you don't ask, you won't get, right? So I never really ask for money, but running a campaign is essentially me asking for money, right? So, so this is that. And hopefully what this will do is sort of make me feel better about the project in terms of feeling like it's not a waste of my like time because yeah. Anyway, the idea is to run like a pay what you want style campaign where anyone that wants to see me continue this series can pledge any amount, right? So the minimum is 10 crowns, which is like, a dollar um, and have the have the uh, the patron perk of adding monsters to the wheel be part of the perk of backing the campaign and of course offering the models from oh yeah I'm calling it seasons as well so here is the slot where the basilisk is gonna go so the next one I'm making and this will wrap up season one which has been 20 spins of the wheel. Um, they look pretty good all together. Like I, I was quite happy to see like this. Um, but yeah, it's pay what you want style campaign. And like, even if this doesn't fund, right? I, I, I'm not sure I'm gonna cancel the series, but I may have to work on other things. Uh, like prioritize are the things, you know, cause I've been on a bit of a roll to try get more traction on the Patreon. You know, that's part of the reason why I'm doing the OPR stuff as well is because um, uh, w when you join the OPR compatibility program, they will post to their socials about you. And, you know, hopefully this will bring in some new patrons as well. And, you know, the idea is that like I'm trying to get this to some sort of level where I can only focus on the Patreon content and get by because limiting, you know, the need for Kickstarter campaigns is, has been my goal this year. Uh, unfortunately, I've not reached it yet, but the idea is that, um, you know, not relying on Kickstarter so much as, as is like, um, you know, ideally residual sales from stuff uh, would be enough, but I just don't get sales. Um, you know, that's on me for not being very good at marketing myself. Uh, but that's like not where, that's where I'm very weak, you know. Uh, I don't pay for advertising either, which I've been I've been thinking about and, and, and I've got an idea for uh, you know, like paid marketing stuff, but just like execution is like, I, I don't really know how to. Hey, if you're, if you're a marketing expert and you want to help me out, please DM me on, on Discord or something. Uh, I'd love to hear, hear, hear you out um, if you're listening this far into the video. But, um, but yeah. So yeah, hopefully this Kickstarter campaign, pay what you want style, wheel of monsters. The idea here is that, you know, if you if you if you like this series and you want to see it, you know, continue in a better fashion, uh, continue 
uh, then you would back it. As a ki as a Patreon supporter, though, like you you really don't have to. Uh, this is only if you really want to see me continue this particular series, right? Because if this campaign doesn't fund, uh, it'll be put on hold for now. I'll work on other things uh, and still put out stuff for the Patreon and all that, uh, but maybe just like more premium products rather than working on this thing that I give away for free. Just because I can't afford to at the moment, uh, to be honest. Like if I was a large patron, like if I had a large Patreon, like the likes of uh, Mr. Miguel uh, or others out there, I would love to just do whatever and put everything out for free. Like if the if the support was there, right? But since I'm not there at the moment, I've got to do some things to get there and. Hopefully this will be a step in the right direction. Um, being a pay what you want style campaign, I think works in the favor of having a patron alongside, right? Because uh, the problem with the, the Frog Folk campaign was that there was like a patron pledge where, yeah, yeah. so the first campaign, which was uh, unsuccessful, didn't have a patron pledge. And the idea was that, okay, why not? Because those of you that support me on Patreon are probably my are like are my biggest supporters. Because you're willing to you know support me with the with money each month. So why not have something extra for you during the Kickstarter campaign? So that was the thought that led to the Frogful campaign having a patron pledge, but the execution of which was kind of strange. Because uh, what if you know you wanted to become a patron after the fact? then you sort of wasted money on the campaign. Or what if you um, found me later and wanted, uh, yeah, whatever the case, like it was uh, strange um, to separate it like that. Uh, and so maybe pay what you want is the way to go because if you're already on Patreon, that's great. Like um, that's worth more to me, all right? But if you also want to support extra to see a certain series succeed or, or, or go for it, then then pay what you want is like the perfect solution to that because then you get to decide you know how much it's worth to you and how much you want to support or help that particular series. And if you are not a patron and found me through these campaigns, then that's just extra, you know, like sort of marketing. So having a live project on Kickstarter is like really valuable, you know, e even if it's just for the sort of marketing, uh, marketing portion, um, the marketing aspect of it. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Like, what am I making here? Um, is this done? Is that enough? Enough features for the worm? I think so. Let's just polish this up and then call it a day. Um, I will make other versions of these worms though. This is fun. Sculpting worms is fun. So hopefully you sculpt your worms too uh, with the file I share. Mm. Oh, yeah, I lost my train of thought again. Sorry, sorry. If, you're, if you've are if you listened this far, how long has it been? 28 minutes. Jesus. Yeah, none of you are going to watch it this far. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, look forward to seeing your sculpted worms if you decide to share it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to turn the stream off or this recording off. I'm going to polish this up. I'll 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 add a quick turnaround at the end of this video for you if you want to see the complete model. Uh but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh if you're watching this on Patreon, I'll leave a link below uh to uh to uh to the files, the yeah, yeah, the the blend file. Um and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you all have a have a lovely day. <laughs> okay, let's give it 15 more seconds. I'll, uh, an even 30 minutes.
Oh wait, no, I'm gonna add the turnaround. I'll just add the turnaround over this video. Okay, 30 minutes spot. 